Hello everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be doing the 2017 end of year book survey. This survey was created by Perpetual Pages, I will have a link down below to their blog post that has all of the questions included in this survey. There are a few that I didn't answer because they weren't necessarily applicable to me. So if this is something that you are also interested in doing, I would certainly recommend taking a look at the blog post to get all of the questions in one place. And without further ado, let's jump into it. To begin, I'll go through a couple of stats. So the total total amount of books that I read in 2017 was 58 and this is inclusive of rereads so the total number of books that I actually reread in 2017 was five books and the genre that I read the most from was unsurprisingly fantasy the percentage of fantasy books to other books was actually 64% so I think that's a pretty decent chunk considering all of the different other genres out there. The best book I read in 2017. This is a really tough one choosing just one favourite so I've gone with two because I couldn't narrow it down. So I'm currently sitting on the fence between Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. I just can't decide between the two. Also be sure to look forward to my favourite books of 2017 video which will be coming up very soon. A book that I was excited about and thought I would love more than I did. I actually had a few reads in 2017 that were like this but probably one of the biggest disappointments for me just because of the hype surrounding the book was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Now don't get me wrong, I like this book but I just didn't love it. I thought I would absolutely fall in love with this one. I thought it was going to be a five star read but it just it wasn't wasn't quite there for me. I do talk about this a little bit more in my upcoming disappointing reads of 2017 video as well so look forward to that to know a little bit more of my thoughts. The most surprising book this can be in a good way or a bad way. This is a book that you will be seeing plenty of in this video just you wait but I'm going with Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I went into this not really knowing what to expect. I didn't really have any expectations about the story and how I would like it but it blew me away. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this book and the writing style in particular I absolutely fell in love with. So yeah this was definitely a great great surprise. The book that I pushed the most people to read. Definitely Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is a book that I've gifted several times and back in 2017 um, not too long after I started at my new job I persuaded a couple of my co-workers to pick up the book and they did and they loved it so that made me feel so so happy. I'm so glad that I got them onto the bandwagon. I will continue to push this book because I love the series so much and especially after God's Grave has come out and my love for God's Grave I've just been pushing this all over again just so people will get into the series so then they can experience the madness that is God's Grave. The best series you started in 2017. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This was just such a fantastic start to the series and the books just get even more action-packed as you go along. They're just so gripping. So glad that I finally picked these books up. Best sequel of 2017. By far God's Grave. Like this was an incredible sequel. There's no, no second book syndrome with this one. It is a masterpiece on its own. It is a very, very strong sequel. Favourite new author author you discovered in 2017. I'm saying this one tentatively just because I haven't actually read any more of her books but I'm gonna go with Lainey Taylor because of how much I loved like I mentioned the writing style in Strange the Dreamer but that being said I haven't read any of her other books so I'm a little hesitant to call her a favorite if I've only read one of her books if you feel me. Best book from a genre I don't typically read or was out of my comfort zone. I'm gonna go with Based on a True Story by Delphine de Vigan. I don't typically read psychological thrillers. Uh, the few that I have read I have really enjoyed. This was no exception. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thought it was executed really well. The mystery behind this particular character named Elle was so intriguing. The most action-packed, thrilling, unputdownable book of the year. Red Rising by Pierce Brown again. As I mentioned before, before. Super super action packed and the action does continue and it amps up later in the series as well but I decided to go with the first book because I found this to be the most unput downable. I was just so much more intrigued in the actual story that was happening uh, kind of in this first book. The action does not let up whatsoever as the stakes get higher and higher you will not want to stop reading this book once you've started. A book that I read in 2017 that I'm most likely to reread in 2018. I had to go with this one because I'm planning on rereading it this month because I'm participating in one of my friend's book clubs. Uh, that's Cassie from Miss Sassy Cassie's Sassy Book Club. The book club pick for January is Strange the Dreamer. I was really excited to hear that this was going to be the pick for January because I've been looking for an excuse to reread it. Like I didn't need an excuse to reread it but 
it was just that extra push to finally pick it up again. So really looking forward to diving back into this one. Favourite cover of a book I read in 2017. Um, I'm going to go with this particular series just because they do have really similar covers and that is Sleeping Giants and Waking Gods by Subain Nouvelle. Like these are just really stunning covers, kind of like a bit of a shimmer to them and with those faces in it. Oh, it's just so eerie and so beautiful. The most memorable character of 2017, probably Severo from Red Rising. Uh, just just the moment that you meet him, he just makes an imprint on your mind and you just can't stop thinking about him. He's just such a fascinating character. He does some really weird things that certainly make him a memorable character, but I also really do love him and the relationship he has with the main character. Also the fact that Piera kept on telling me how much she loved Severo, so I went into this with Severo at the forefront of my mind, like I couldn't wait to meet him, so that might have had a bit of an impact as well. The most beautifully written book in 2017. There's quite a few books that I could have chosen for this one, uh, Strange to the Dreamer being one of them, but I'm trying not to overwhelm you with that book in this video, so instead I've decided to go with Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. The main reason why I decided to go for this one is because this is a book that's written in verse, and I think it was really beautifully done. Like, the content itself is really quite intense, and I do think that the verse format really complemented it nicely. A book that I can't believe I waited until 2017 to finally read. Yeah, it took me a little while to jump on this bandwagon and when I got there I was so annoyed at myself for not having gotten onto it sooner when everybody was reading the book and talking about it. I could have been in those conversations and lusting after Reese alongside everybody in the world, but I jumped on a little bit late. My favourite passage or quote from a book that I read this year. So this quote is from Strange to the Dreamer. What is a horizon? Laszlo asked, straight faced. Is it like the end of an aisle of books? The shortest and longest books I read in 2017. The shortest book that I read was On the Merits of Unnaturalness by Samantha Shannon. This was 37 pages long. And the longest book that I read was The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss coming in at 994 pages. The book that shocked me the most. I'm gonna go with Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. And I'm not going to go into any detail because spoilers, but there were a few things that we learned in this book that definitely shocked me and proved to be kind of the turning point of the story for me. My OTP of the year. This is a really hard question because I don't often think about my OTPs. Like I always find myself stumped when I come across this question. I don't know why. I'm gonna go with a little less known couple my OTP. And that is Alex and Caden from the Medoran Chronicles by Lynette Noni. And one of the reasons for this is because I am shipping these two hardcore. Like, they're not together yet. It's a really lovely slow burn throughout the series. And I'm really enjoying seeing things progress at a kind of snail pace. At the same time, I'm really excited for the possibility of something in the future. My favourite non-romantic relationship. As I mentioned before, I really like the relationship between Severo and Darrow. I really like the banter between the two, I think that is great. But at the same time, they also have a lot of respect for each other and they're also extremely loyal as well. Like, they go through shit don't get me wrong, they go through a lot. There are moments where their friendship is kind of fragile, but at the same time, they really work to fix things, and I really liked their relationship. My favourite book that I read in 2017 from an author I have previously read before. I'm going to go with A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas, because I've read the majority of the Throne of Glass series, I've read, I think, up to Queen of Shadows, and I've enjoyed those books, and I also read A Court of Thorns and Roses and enjoyed it, but... This I loved and it really blew me away. Newest fictional crush from a book I read in 2017. Again, could say Reese, but I'm not gonna. I'm actually gonna go with Seth from Moxie because I really, really adored the relationship between Viv and Seth. And I really appreciated seeing the changes in Seth um, as he's kind of learning about the issues, like the sexist problems that are in their high school and how he's kind of trying to come to terms with the different situation that these girls are in. So like, he's obviously in a position of privilege, but he does work towards kind of understanding what's going on, or at least being more open-minded to it and accepting things, even if he can't fully understand it. So I really like that about his character. I also love, there's a particular moment where he asks if he can kiss Viv, and I thought that was so beautiful, like he's asked permission, he just didn't do it without checking that she wanted to kiss him as well, and I thought that was so cute and so respectful. Just the whole relationship is, I think, really respectful, and I think that is such an admirable thing 
for a crush. The best world building and or most vivid setting from a book I read this year. Definitely Strange the Dreamer. It had such beautiful beautiful prose. A little bit flowery at times but I don't think it was really over the top at all. I think it really did lend to a vivid sense of the world, painting it so colourfully. Like even the moments when we're in a library I felt like I could see it all so clearly in my head. As well as the other places that we get to explore in this world, it all just was described so wonderfully. And the history as well is so rich, so very rich. And I've just really enjoyed learning about these places and the past. It was just so, so great. Guys, read this book if you haven't already. It's fantastic. A book that put a smile on my face and was the most fun to read. I'm gonna go with Moxie. In this book, the main character Viv starts an anonymous feminist zine, which sparks a bit of a revolution in her high school, and a lot of the time the girls will come together and do these rebellious acts, and the things that they did a lot of the time were hilarious, and I found myself laughing. I really enjoyed seeing all of those scenes play out and how the teachers were kind of stunned and didn't know how to react to it all but at the same time there wasn't much that they could do it was so great a book that made me cry in 2017 strange the dreamer they both died at the end by adam silvera this isn't a case of like a tear or two sliding down my cheek as i was reading like i was a sobbing sobbing mess i had to stop reading because i couldn't see there were too many tears in my eyes it was it was not pretty. A book that crushed my soul. I will never forgive you, Adam. Never. The most unique book that I read this year. I'm gonna go with Gemini by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff because the way that this is set up, it's a dossier of records of messages and emails and interviews. There's also some diary entries and it's not just written things, it's also things that the character has drawn. It's set up in a really different way from your typical novel and I really, really enjoy it for that fact. I think it works really well for the story. The most challenging thing about my channel or my reading life this year. For some reason in 2017, I really struggled finding a balance between my uni work and my channel and reading. There were a few moments where I just let a lot of things slide and I didn't post very frequently or I didn't read much at all. In those moments, because I was so stressed, I wasn't forcing myself to do these things. So perhaps that might have been it. Like in the past, I have forced myself to read and forced myself to produce content when I wasn't feeling like it. And I think that kind of showed a little bit. So it's a good and a bad thing, but I was just honestly a little bit surprised because the previous year I had a lot more going on. I was doing more uni work. I was living out of home, then I was moving and there seemed to be a lot more going on in 2016, but I really suffered in 2017. I don't know. Did I complete any of my reading goals in 2017? My Goodreads challenge at the very beginning of the year I set to 20 books and I accomplished that before halfway through the year so I upped it to 40 books and then I didn't decide to up it anymore but I did read a total of 58 so yes I completed that goal. One book that I didn't get around to reading in 2017 but will be my number one priority in 2018. Morning Star by Pierce Brown. This is the third book in the Red Rising trilogy and I have started it. I started this book back in November but I didn't read anything for the last part of November and practically all of December. Like I didn't finish a book in December. I still am in the middle of this one. I'm kind of annoyed at myself that I haven't finished it just yet because I'm really enjoying it but reading hasn't been happening so hoping that I finish this one ASAP. One thing I hope to accomplish in my reading or blogging life in 2018. In terms of my channel I'm hoping to post a little bit more consistently um, some more creative content so not just the typical you know book hauls and wrap-ups and TBRs and all of the unboxings that I've been doing. I'm hoping that I'm able to dedicate a little bit more time into doing a lot of those videos that I had ideas for and that I haven't had the time to plan and film and produce. So that's what I'm hoping to do post some more exciting content and consistently do that. We shall see how that all turns out. In terms of reading, I haven't really set myself any goals necessarily. One of the main things that I'm doing and will continue to do is to focus on reading more diversely. So that is something that I will be keeping in mind throughout the year. But aside from that, no pressures otherwise. <laughs> and that concludes the 2017 end of year reading survey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have completed this survey in a video blog format, whichever place that you posted it on the internet, then feel free to leave that 
that in a link in the comment section below if you would like and I can go and check that out. That is all that I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in a new video but until then I will talk to you in the comments. Bye!